for you, man. Say thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you for your grace upon our lives. Thank you, Jesus, for a season like this. Thank you for the love that you have for us as individual, as a family, and as a group. Thank you for giving yourself to us. Thank you for the work of redemption. Thank you for your death. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for resurrection. Father, we adore you. We thank you because you are going to walk with us tonight, even with the power of your resurrection. We thank you because you will meet with us even in this garden tonight. Father, be glorified in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, O oh God. We commit everything into your hands, Lord, we pray. Have your way in the name of Jesus. From the beginning to the end, let your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you for what you are said to do. Thank you for your son that you will use. For true aim, you will reach out to us. And at the end of everything, all glory, honor, and adoration will be returned back to you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe we are living so in the house tonight. I like us to worship God together tonight. And I pray that the Lord will accept us and accept our worship in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, we enthrone you. We proclaim you asking, asking. Standing here in the midst of us, we lift to high with a happy and as we worship, be the truth. And as we worship, build your throne. And as we worship, build your throne. Come, Lord Jesus, and take your place. Come, Lord Jesus. And take your place, holy, holy, are you Lord of creation, for you God, worthy, worthy, worthy. Is your name, Lord? We worship your majesty, glory, holy, holy Lord. Are you Lord of creation? Call you God. Worthy, worthy, worthy is your name. We worship your majesty. Awesome God, the great heart. You are Lord. 
mighty high of miracles you stand in awe of your holy name lord we bow and worship you lord we bow lord we bow we bow and worship you awesome god awesome god our great of heart you are god mighty high on me like we stand in hope holy name lord we bow we bow and worship you lord we bow lord we bow and worship lord we bow we bow lord we bow and worship you brother and i to join me as we worship god in the spirit lika bali bala boza yeto bozo to lika zika yeta ya mata paya gada gada go ahead and worship the lord go ahead and worship him tonight go ahead and worship him tonight. he's an wholesome god he's a god of love he's he's great only he is above all is on in all is the reason for our living is the reason for our existence is our deliverer our rock our defense lika palinda labosa maka paya gada gada gade yeke bozun to li branda ye hala yeke tele ge bozun to li dana boja ye awesome god awesome god how great thou art, you are God, mighty high, your me, Raku, we stand in awe of your holy name. Lord, we bow and worship you. Lord, we bow and worship you. You are your
Omega. You are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, Lord, you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. Lord, you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh, you are Jehovah. You are Jehovah, you are the King. You are so faithful to Pharaoh's. Yay. You are so faithful to disappoint me. Hey, Jesus. You prove yourself in my life. And I've come to realize you are too faithful to fail me. Somebody joining me to sing the song. The Lord is faithful. He can never disappoint. He can never let us down. He's a covenant keeping God. When he says something, he means it. He doesn't lie because it's not a man. Oh, you are too faithful to fail me. Oh, Jesus, my Lord, you are too faithful to disappoint me. You prove yourself in my life, and I've come to realize you are too faithful to fail me. Oh, you are too faithful to fail me. Oh, oh, oh Jesus, you are too faithful to disappoint me. You prove yourself in my life, and I've come to realize that you are too faithful to fail me. Lord, you are too faithful to fail us. As a family, as a group, you are too faithful, Lord. You can never disappoint. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all adoration, Lord. Thank you, Father. Bless the Redeemer. Forever your name be praised. In Jesus' mighty name we worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you heard what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given me the victory. That's why I sing. Oh, say yeah. Have you heard what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given me the victory. That's all I see. Oh, say yeah. Oh, say yeah. Oh, say yeah. You don't know. Oh, say yeah. Oh, say yeah. Oh, say yeah. You don't know. Oh, say yeah. Leave Jesus by a little Maya. Come on, lift him my lift him my Leave Jesus, I lift him my Oh, say yeah, oh, say yeah. You don't win, no, oh, say yeah. Bata, bata, eh, oh, say yeah. You don't win, no, oh, say yeah. Go so babi re, go si, go si. Go so babi re, go si, go si. La ye yi ati loru, ge si wolo. Go so babi re, go so babi re, go si, go si. Go so babi re, go si, go si. La ye yi ati loru, ge si wolo. Soba bire, your love is so great. 
your merciful and gracious. You redeem my soul from every destruction. I will sing your praise, oh Lord. I will dance and leave to her. Ah, you mean so much to me, Jesus. No one like you. No one like you to see, to see. No, no, no one like you to see, to see. Lie ye at Jesu Holoru, O Saba Bire. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we worship. Amen. Please join me as we take our hymn. The great physician now is near. La 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 no sympathize in Jesus. He spills the truth in heart to share. Oh, hear the voice of Jesus. So it is not in Sarah's song. So it is not on my tongue, sweet as carol ever song. Jesus, blessed Jesus. Your many sins are all forgiven. Oh, yeah, the voice of Jesus. Go on your way in peace to heaven and wear a crown. Sweet as Lord in Sarah's song. Sweet as name on mortal tongue. Sweetest star, oh, have a song. Jesus, bless the Jesus. Oh, glory to the dying Lord. I now believe in Jesus. I love the blessed Savior's name. I love the name of Jesus. Sweetest Lord in Sarah's song. Sweetest name on my tongue. Sweetest star, oh, have a song. Jesus, blessed Jesus. Mm, 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 mm. His name is my guilt and fear. No hold the name but Jesus. Oh, how my soul delights to hear the charming name of Jesus. So it is not in Sarah's song. So it is name on my tongue. So it is Carol have a song. Jesus bless the Jesus. 
You, man, we are very grateful. You can just go ahead and worship God for the night because the, street, the healing stream is here in the house. Let's thank you because His word send the healing, send He send His word, and healings come to our being. Thank you because His name still heal. Thank you because there is hope in His name, there is victory in His name. Thank you because there is perfect healing in His name. <laughs> there is no sickness. There is no diseases that is not covered in the blood and the stripe of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, by his stripe, we are healed. And there is no fear that is not dispelled in his name. That song says, his name dispel my fear. Thank you because in him, we have healing. In him, we have trust. Just worship him, magnify him, exalt him, give him glory, give him glory, give him glory. Because even now he's sending forth his healing hand. The healing stream is still flowing, giving comfort and peace. Just worship him and bless his name. Thank him and honor him, magnify him. Thank him for the victory. Thank him for victory in his name. In his name, there is perfect victory. 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 Please worship him and magnify him. Thank you because tonight you have victory in his name. Exalt because tonight you have victory in his name. Give him glory, give him glory. Because you have victory in his name. Oh, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Great things are happening now. Wonderful things are happening now. Thank you because in his name, all your fears are gone. In his name, all your worries are gone. In his name, there is no plan of the enemy that can stay. His name dispel my fear. Worship him and magnify him. Worship and magnify him. Worship and magnify him. Every fear has subdued. Every worries has subdued. Every concern has subdued in his name. Thank him. 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 He said with the heart, man believe. And with the mouth, confession is made. Righteousness. I believe there is healing now. I believe there is healing for in his name. I believe there is victory in his name. I believe only the mind of God will come to pass for me. I believe no one can say the things and come to pass. I said God commanded. Thank you, Father. I believe it's only your name I have victory. I believe it's only your name I have victory. Nobody can harass me. Nobody can say anything and it come to pass when you have not commanded it. It's only your name that victory is certain. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The Bible says as they went to get to place to place and they were discussing your word, they were being healed. Signs and wonder we are taking place. Thank you, because as we discuss your name, your victory on Calvary tonight. Oh, signs and wonders we're taking place in our midst. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. At the time this meeting is ended, every fear will be gone, and every worry will be gone, every victory will be certain. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are giving thanks. Amen. Father, thank you because you are wonderful. We give you glory, we give you honor. Thank you for the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for this is in particular. The is in that make us who we are, believers in Christ Jesus. Thank you for his death. 
first and foremost, thank you for the beating for the tribes. Because the Bible says in each of those tribes, there was healing. Yes. Thank you, because that healing, that blood that flowed through his, out of his skin, the toned skin, the butter skin, every drop of blood that come down was all for our healing. This we believe and this we confess. Thank you, because by his strife, indeed, we are healed. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, sir. We give you all the glory. Be exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Oh, by that death and the victory on the third day, he was given a name above all names. At the name of Jesus Christ, every fear is dispelled. And God did not say it's cancelled. And every worries are subdued. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, sir. Thank you because what we have done, nobody can change it. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, what the Lord has done, it shall be forever. When you say things, no one can change it. When you establish a purpose, no one can pull it down because we are God. And in the name of Jesus Christ, every knee about, every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank you because in every situation of our life, in every circumstance we find ourselves, Jesus Christ is Lord. We say, Blessed be your name. Alleluia. Thank you for the victory on Calvary and the hope of resurrections, the beauty, the victory, the, the praise, and the newness of covenant that comes through the blood of Jesus Christ is death and resurrections. And resurrections. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we know the healing stream is still flowing. You say, When you send your word, your word heals. He said, I'll be lifted up, I will draw men to my side. And the mystery of the death, the mystery of resurrection, heals, delivers, liberates. Lord, as we discuss these mysteries tonight, as we discuss these things tonight, as we call the event of the three days tonight, Father, let there be healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let fear be dispelled in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let worries be gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let God be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Every sick now I speak to your body, wherever you may be, whoever you may be, and wherever they may be, and whatever the sickness may be, that he speak his word now. He sent his word and it was healed. That is for you now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And everything the devil must have told you, or you have heard, or every suggestion you're hearing, everything in your mind that God has not pronounced by his word tonight. Those statements are cancelled in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, Your agreement with death shall be it is and all, and your covenant with hell are thereby cancelled. Therefore, tonight, every, uh, every agreement with hell, every covenant with death mm -hmm. that God has not signed into, as we discuss this word, they are cancelled in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Every sickness in bodies, in spirit, in soul, every high fever, every pain here and there in the body every concern in the mind, every concern in the head, every disturbances, wherever it may be, even for those that are not in this meeting now, because of one pain or sickness or the other, I send forth healing now. Let the healing virtue begin to flow into their bones. Let there be healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, speak these things, confirm your word with sign following, that indeed they are your minds and they are your words in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We pray for our country in particular at a time like this, Lord, let the power of resurrection bring forth a new Nigeria. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The same power that raised all Jesus Christ from the dead. Let that power now, at this time, as we speak, as we discuss the work of grace on the three days, Lord, let the same power enter through Nigeria, enter into Nigeria and flow through the four corners, the pillar of this country, and every wall, this land. Oh Lord, and every grain that make all this land, every water, everything that is Nigeria. Let the healing power flow in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let there be resurrections Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And the power of the Almighty that will flow and bring about the exaltation and the enthronement of the elect. Let it begin to flow now from tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And the throne, every high throne that exalted themselves above the knowledge of God in Nigeria. Every high throne that played themselves above the mind of God in Nigeria. Every ambition that God has not entered into. Every thief, every lies that is propagated in Nigeria, that has been ruling for years and be pulling down the purpose of God for this land. Tonight, as it's discussed this word 
in our little corner here, let the power of resurrection come out from here to flow all over Nigeria and pull down every truth, every power, every structures that God has not erected and demonic power that God has not signed into. Let me put down in the mighty name of Jesus and let the elect fit into his throne and let God be glorified in our land in Jesus' mighty name. I pray once again for our pregnant women, wherever it may be. Lord, I'll be putting them in my mind all day, even throughout as, as far back as this now. And I'll be trusting God for you. Wherever you may be, I send forth strength to your body, Amen. to your bone, Amen. to your to your body, to your to your belly, to your womb, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God will uphold you. This journey will not fail. Amen. It will end in victory. Amen. It will not be terminated. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. you will not cast your young in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I am trusting God for such things again. Yours are now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Tonight, Lord, be glorified in our means. Amen. Speak to us quickly Amen. and let the work of salvation and the work of healing and mercy be done in all of our lives as we speak these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Open our eyes to them Amen. and be glorified in our means. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Spirit. Amen. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Wherever you may be, please carefully listen. And the healing power and the virtues in this world will flow through your hearing into your bodies and you receive all the healings and mercy and grace that you need for this journey in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Quickly, I want to remind us, May this May 2022 is always May every year, and 2022 will not be different. It's always our Thanksgiving month. And this is our fifth Thanksgiving anniversary. It's always the time we set aside to thank God for what He has done in our lives in the past one year. If you look at your own life very carefully, you will know that in the past one year, as a member of Praying Prayer Prayer Group, you have been blessed. God has visited you, He has done you well. And it has been good to you. There is no way we will not look to our life and we will not know and we will not see reasons to give him glory. And therefore, May 2022, May is always our times of praising God. And this year we will be beginning by God's grace and we go through the month of May. So plan to be part of it and plan to also give God a thanksgiving offering at the end of the month. God bless us to do so in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I always tell you that um, your thank you for doesn't have to come through the, the group. It can be wherever you send it. And God will bless us to do so in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. It's always on ourselves, on the behalf of ourselves, and on behalf of our children to thank God for the last 365 days and for answering all our prayers. God bless us to do so in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Quickly, we go to the story for tonight. It's just a story nine. Bible says it is not good for a soul to be without knowledge. If you are Christians, there are some things you should know because they are good for understanding and they are good for our spiritual lives and they are good for our healing and for the purpose of God for our life. And there is no way you speak the mind of God. The Bible says that the disciple was going from place to place, speaking his mind. They receive great grace. There is a place of, there is a grace and there is great grace. So they received great grace, and God was confirming those words with sign following. And that is exactly what we experienced tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So quickly we discuss why did God not allow the Jews and their cohorts in the Roman armies to secretly execute Jesus Christ or crucify secretly without anybody knowing that they did to John the Baptist? Why did God not allow that? That's the topic for tonight. You will remember that um, John was killed. Just the day was not even planned to be killed. It was has not been tried. He was only arrested for speaking against the king and for accusing the king that you were sleeping with the wife of your brother. And it ought not to be so. You even take the woman away and you married him, marry her. And John the Baptist, as a prophet, was uh, speaking to the king. And the king fell offended because it was practically in the early raising the people against the king, against the throne, and was arrested and put in a prison to be arranged and tried some other time. But before that took place, in just in a birthday party, and wanting later on that thing, eventually John was killed. It was a secret killing. Nobody knew when he was killed. Only for them to hear in town that, ah, I hear since John don't die, 
I heard that John don't die. When they die, I hear that they kill him. So, so, so it became a rumor that was eventually confirmed to be true. Why did God not allow Jesus Christ to be so crucified secretly without being a ridicule and disgrace and naked and beaten publicly as he went through it? You know, the many people have died before that time, they don't disappear and never found again, secretly executed. That be part of government from beginning of human government, even to now. I remember in our country so many years ago, when those days of coup upon coup, this I army, mean, this uh, regime, there is a coup, and then there is a coup, and in particular, group coup plotters in the 90s, I think, when uh, IBB was in government. I remember I was quite small then, but I remember the particular scene, one particular night, some of them have been arrested, they have been secretly tried, and uh, a particular night, I remember watching NTA national news, and it was just announced that those people have been tried, found guilty, and they have been executed. It was done secretly. Did today nobody saw their body? Nobody knew when they were killed, but it was uh, carried out in secret. So government sometimes carry out secret executions, and sometimes they follow public. They do it publicly. If you are to be today that Jesus Christ was crucified, it will be carried live in all the new channel: BBC, CNN, Al Jazeera, France 24, NTA. Uh, uh, local news here, maybe shining televisions, uh, AIT, all the news available. And uh, it has been carried live even on all the social media because some big name is being executed on that day. But that was the experience of Jesus Christ was publicly disgraced and publicly executed like a common criminal and uh, like a popular criminal that disturbed the country so much, despite that it wasn't do that. But the trial was part, partly or majorly secret. It was arrested in the dead of the night. And then before you know it, it was executed. I mean, it was condemned. And they only come on the day, during the day to come and ratify what has taken place in the night. All was taking place like this night now. They arrest him towards the dead of the night like this. And before daybreak, it was it has gone through three different courts. The court of the high peace the court of Pilate, the court of uh, Herod. It has gone through three different courts. It has been condemned already before people wake up. By the time it was money, people only, they only knew that, uh, as a matter of fact, the city only heard that it had, been, it had been condemned to be crucified and they saw him carrying the cross to, the, to Calvary. When they did that secret trial, they were as well kill him that night before daybreak. But something somewhere kept him he was publicly executed in the open. I'm going to see the study in two parts. Number one, why the devil instigate the Jews? Why the devil instigate the Jews to publicly crucify Jesus Christ? And number two, why did God allow it that way? Why did Jews publicly, why did the devil instigate the, the, the Jews to publicly disagree Jesus Christ and, and crucify Jesus Christ like that? And why did God Allow it. Why did God not allow his son to be secretly tried and secretly killed without them disgracing him and publicly executing him the way they did? Remember John the Baptist that first of all saw him when he was coming in John chapter 1, verse 29. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. They asked him, that, Are you the, the Lamb that is coming? Are you this and that? He said, I'm not the one. Are you the prophet? I'm not the one. There's one coming behind me who should lashes. I am unworthy to lose. And while I was speaking that the following day, Jesus Christ was coming and said, that's the person I was talking about yesterday, the Lamb of God. And a day after that again, Jesus Christ was walking by, he saw him again and said, I saw this man yesterday, I told you, this is the same man again, the Lamb of God. And that John, when he was, being, when he was arrested and killed, was secretly done. But when Jesus Christ was arrested, it was made publicly it was mean but let's see one of those things that he went through in matthew 26 verse 57 verse 57 matthew 26 let me read from verse 57 after he was arrested please quickly read with me matthew 26 verse 57 and they that had and they, and they that had laid hold on jesus led him away to suffer the high priest that's after they have arrested him we are described and the elders were assembled in that night but Peter followed him afar off into the high priest's palace and went in and served with the servant to the, 
to see to the end. Now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought first accusation against Jesus to put him to death. They sought, they, they have no evidence, but they have to look for false accusations by sister, sister, but they found none. Yea, though many false witnesses came up, they never added together. They couldn't find anyone against him. But at last came two false witnesses and said, this fellow, this man, said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build in three days. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answer thou nothing. What is it which this witness speak against thee? Remember in the other verse said, all the scribes, the elders of the Jews, or the sheep priests, or the council in the mass temple. It was already planned work. They did everything when the city we are sleeping. It was a secret trial, a secret arrangement that they said how to do it when the people are sleeping secretly and finish this man before they were not about they have condemned him to death before they break but Jesus heard his but Jesus heard his peace and he had priest answer and said I adjure you I beg you by the living God that thou tell us whether you are the Christ son of God we only said that to just to make him say something they can add him with his own by his word and Jesus said to him thou said nevertheless I say unto you Hereafter shall you see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and come in the cloud of heaven. Then the high priest ran his clothes. Why wow, he said that is too much now? But he, he turned his he tied his clothes and turned his clothes, then his clothes, and as that yea, you have spoken blasphemy. What for that need have we of witnesses? Behold, now have heard his blasphemy. With what think ye? The answer and say is guilty of death. Then did they spit on his face? That is only done for criminals, was of criminals, dejected of men. They spit on his face, they buffeted him, and others smote him with their palm, with the palms of their right or their hands. I wish I, I, I pity this boy that they look at this video in, his, in the light of eternity, and they saw them smiting the Son of God. They will be regretting this for their for the rest of eternity. Now they say it's guilty. Of death, even when the the the, the trial has not going to go on, they could have killed him by themselves here and here. But God has made sure by then that the Roman government has put in place that no council has the power to confine and to execute death penalty without the knowledge of Pilate. Unlike the one Herod did secretly, but this one they obey that rule and they say, okay, before we kill him ourselves, we know this bit of death. Let go and take and pilot. This is our conclusion. And God was doing that so that it can get to the public where his will will be perfected. Now, why the devil allow why the devil instigate that? Because the Bible said Jesus said himself, he said, the will of your father, the devil, you will do. So all these instigations, all this line here, we are all perpetrated by the devil. Even though it is the mind of God, they should die. But as at this time, it was the devil that was actually instigating the evil against them. And in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 8, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 8, it is said that the one that the, the kingdom of darkness, they look back and they say, Have we no, we will not have crucified the Lord of glory. Because uh, they now regretted the action. So all the action here, all the instigations, all the lies, we are all by the devil just to make sure that uh, Jesus Christ was crucified. And why was the devil so was doing that? Number one, he wanted to publicly ridicule Jesus Christ. You know, so Jesus Christ came, he had delivered many from his hand. Many dead had been brought back to life. Many sick had been healed. Many that had been there for years, many years, has received healing. I remember saying, man that was sick for 38 years, and was and that woman was banned for many years like that. And that was there for 12 years. Now was a man of gathering that was in the tomb for several years. All we are delivered, delivered by the hand of this same Jesus. And the demons know they know that this man is like this. Surely there is Poland in their kingdom. And they gather all the cool using the men around him that they must publicly ridicule him. So that's the first motive. That the devil want to achieve by making sure instigating the Jews to publicly ridicule Jesus Christ as a coaching. So that they might publicly ridicule. Many times they want to cash in, 
if you just move for their miss and go, they can't touch him. Many times they want to arrest him. They're looking at him like this, they can't do anything. And that was why the, the, the Judas betrayed him because he felt they don't many times. You just pass their miss. At times, you just disappear. They can't, they, don't, they can't do anything. Let me just make my own money. But no to him, it was joining the devil to fulfill the mind of the enemy so that they can publicly ridicule him. And number two, so that uh, after they publicly ridicule him, all the general public, the people that put their trust in him, they can be disappointed. You know, they mock at him. If you look at Matthew 27, verse 40, they say, you have done so many things to people. Why don't you come and help yourself? You that have helped many people. You have delivered many people. The physicians, he yourself. Even the thief, one of them said, uh -uh, you have delivered many. Can't you deliver yourself and deliver us? So they determined to publicly ridicule him. In Luke 23, 37, you see that there, they we are ridiculing him so that the people that put their trust in him can be disappointed. Just feel this, I was talking to my wife ago, and I said that they call one uh, Good Friday. And I said, what they call Saturday? Maybe holy Saturday. I said, it is, it's, it's supposed to be a black, hopeless Saturday. Because that Saturday before the resurrection, disciples lost hope. All their hope and their investment and their belief in Jesus Christ was practically down and uh, totally gone because they never expected that it should be arrested cheaply as they did. So the devil made sure that it was publicly ridiculed so that everyone that put their trust in him can be disappointed. But it was very wrong. Unknown to him, he was still doing the will of God, thinking he was really clean Jesus Christ. No wonder in that first Corinthians 2, verse 8, they acclaim, they cry that as we know, we will not have crucified the law of glory. You know, many times you are passing through certain things, some difficult period, some very public ridicule, they ridicule you. You can't even pay your own school fees, you can't pay your own rent. This and this, you have been praying for years. Where is the result? They want to just ridicule you and make you to be ashamed. You've been married for years now. We are the children, and you see yourself. You go to church every now and then, and you're the one pushing to us. Where is your own? You know, just to allow you to be ridiculed and disgraced. But the Bible says all things work together for good. So that put that trust in him. Exactly, that was Jesus Christ. Even though the devil wants him to be whether to be disappointed in him or no to him, it is that disappointment that he thought would happen. That beating, imagine beating this man. This is a man that, uh, that has the power. The people know he has the power. He has, they are seen demonstrating the power. He has fed 5,000. He fed 3,000 with extra remaining. He has done so many things. And they knew it's even we walk, on, walk on water. Many times they will leave him in one city, cross the sea with sheep. And before they get to the other city, he was already there. They wonder how he got there. He has the power to appear and to reappear. So they wonder how it was so easy for him to be to be arrested and destroyed like this. But the Bible says, why do we are beating him? Unknown to these people, their healing, we are being perfected. Their, their comfort, we are being perfected. So, and eventually that came to the understanding of every one of us. The devil meant it for bad, but eventually it was done for good. Everything in you and me that the devil is doing to disgrace us, to make us worthless to make us hopeless, to make us face tribulations, to look as if God is not answering our prayers, they will all turn around for a good one day in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So if they want to ridicule him, number one, public ridicule, which is a, a practically achieved, but unknown to him, he was doing the mind of God for the Son of God. He said, for this reason, because he was so humble to go through that uh, terrible, uh, terrible uh, ridicule, he was eventually given a name above all name. If the devil knew that Jesus Christ will receive a name above all name by the reason of this ridicule he was going through, he will never have allowed it to happen. He will do everything to kill him secretly like in the deeds of John the Baptist. But God did not allow him to see. So be I beg of you, whatever you are going through now, that see if you are being ridiculed. That see if God is not answering your prayer. That see if God is not there to, to settle your case. Just don't worry. All we end up being to his praise in your life. God is always there. It was in the revelation, in revelation, what we are told in the revelation that uh, there are these kings, they gather together so as to do their own will. 
and destroy the purpose of God. The Bible said that while they were doing that, they did not know that they were actually doing the mind of God. They were fulfilling the mind of God in Revelation chapter 17, verse 12 to 13, and verse 17. They thought they were being smart, just like uh, the devil now, thinking he was being smart on not to him. He was actually doing the will of God for Jesus Christ. So, and lastly, he wanted to cut short the spread of his influence. His teaching, his method, his authority, his power, his miracle. It was going too fast for the devil. And the devil said, No, this man, the way he's going, I must cut him short before he destroy everything I have. And I'm not to him, in cutting him short, he practically finished himself and his kingdom. So, three reasons why the devil was doing his work on, the, on that day is to get the Jews and the Roman Empire against Jesus Christ, even those that called him yesterday. And they say, Hosanna to the king of Israel. And they are praising him. The same people, just 24 hours after, they are saying, crucify him. And say, even if you don't crucify him, say, and the party was saying, why are you doing this? Even our children, let the blood be on them. You don't care. Let the blood be on our children. <laughs> if, uh, if, if, if we are wrong, they are practically causing their own generation just to do the will of the enemy and all to cut short the spread of Jesus Christ, of his influence, of his teaching, of his authority, of his miracle and power in the life of the people. <coughs> and not to them, excuse me, eventually, that was what made it to be the mind of God. And today we can still call on that name and hold on to that blood that was shed on Calvary and we have our victory. Therefore, I prophesy to every life here this, this hour, Every plan of the devil working so far and to see if it's having its way, to see if your marriage is not working, to see if nothing you do in your life is prospering together. But thank God it's true, it's true. All we work out together to his glory for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So that was the three reasons why the devil was after instigated the man to crucify him publicly, to ridicule him because he too have the devil in many ways to destroy his works and to make the public to lose covenant con uh, con uh, interest in him and trust in him. No wonder the Bible says in Romans that if you believe in Jesus Christ with all your heart and you confess with your mouth, then you have salvation because you must believe in this man that you believe in, even though it was publicly ridicule. And secondly, it was publicly uh, do, uh, publicly dejected and we can be disappointed in him. And lastly, he was publicly ridiculed and dejected and disappointed and people disappointed in him so they can cut short his influence and his uh, teaching in, uh, in, 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 in Jews, in the land of the Jews. That was the devil's mind. And virtually, this recorder, they regretted it in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 8. That had they known, they would never have crucified the Lord of glory. Now, why did God allow that? That is the main reason for tonight. I want to see from the devil perspective first, before we saw, we see from the perspective of God, that may have a balanced view of it. We are seeing why the devil was doing it. Then let's see why did God allow it. It was the son of God that was given power. He was highly exalted. He was magnifying heaven. Angels are always at his service. He commands them to go. He says that I can command legions of angels now, and they will come to fight for me. Only one angel, King 187, 85 Assyrians in 185,000 Assyrians in one single night. 185,000 Assyrians were killed in one single night by only one angel. In the Red Sea, as many as the, the, the servant of uh, Pharaoh, they were all buried in one single night. In one single day, the Bible says we are moving the heat sudden, demons sudden, they fled away. In one single day, God can do the impossible. And yet, this man that is so powerful, was arrested just overnight and was publicly disgraced like this. Why did God allow it? Number one, because God wants to satisfy himself and his requirement for atonement. God wants to satisfy himself and his requirement for atonement. Look at in the Old Testament. If you look at Exodus 20, verse 24, it was stated there. Leviticus 3, verse 1 to 2, it was also there. If you look at if we look at the end, 
the verticals, all chapter 3 is always there. Look at 2 Kings 16, verse 15, they are all there. Now, in the old temple, when a man brings the lamb, he has committed a sin and discovered that he has sinned against God and he wants forgiveness, he will bring his lamb or his uh, uh, goods or his uh, whatever he has he brought for offering to exchange himself because a sinner ought to die. Once somebody commits sin, death is the penalty. The Bible says that the penalty of sin is death. But this man don't want to die. And God to make pressure that I don't know if you don't want to die for your sin, then bring an animal, an innocent animal that not commit the sin. And when you go to the temple, put your hand on the animal, confess your sin on the animal. And once your sin has confessed on the animal, then give the animal to the altar the animal as some place designated for it, and we bring the animal to the altar and its blood, pour on the altar in the four corner of the altar. And the animal will publicly be burnt on that altar. So every animal that was ever crucified, ever, ever killed, sacrificed in the temple on the tabernacle of Moses or temple of Jerusalem, as the case may be, they were all publicly sacrificed in the open of all. The altar was exalted. It's, a, it's an high thing that once you are in the temple, you can see the altar wherever you may be. And every animal was sacrificed on that altar. In the sight of all, none was secretly sacrificed. Or you can put your hand on the animal and secretly confess on it. That can be done. But when you go to the place of sacrificing the animal to God, it must be on the altar where everyone will see it. It's from the altar that we collect the blood. They will take to the inner and the holy of holy for the people to sacrifice for them. Because without that, without the atonement of blood, I mean shedding of blood, there's no atonement for sin. So every animal that are told for sin in the old temple, we are publicly executed. Everyone saw it, that this animal has been killed for this person, so that it can be forgiven in sin. And the same thing was done for Israel on the day of atonement. They bring the goats, two of them, and one will be publicly killed there. And that will be sent to the desert where everybody will see it after they have put their hand on it and confess all their sin to the high priest. So it is pub, they are all publicly executed, and all those animals we are pointing to only one person, Jesus Christ. And that's why they call him the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God, who will be publicly executed for the sin of all. And if Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God, he must also go through what other lambs, other animals that have been killed in the old temple went through. And that's why he must be publicly executed. He, he had been executed or killed in the secret. He wouldn't have fulfilled that condition. And today, me and you wouldn't have been saved. So, number one, he was publicly executed so that he might fulfill the purpose and the mind of God to satisfy the condition of God for atonement. Without the shedding of blood, there's no atonement for sin. And the shedding of blood must be done publicly. The animals in the temple are all killed publicly for all to see. And therefore, Jesus Christ must go through that to be made public so that it can satisfy the requirement of God for the atonement of human being. He was telling just uh, Mary in Matthew 121, he said, He have given me a son, and his name shall be called Jesus Christ. And by this Jesus Christ, he will take away the sin of the world, of his people. So if he has to do that, it must, be, it must happen publicly. Even when devil was instigating that to happen, he forgot that was the mind of God for him to, to be the savior of the world. He must be sacrificed publicly, just as other animals in the temple for him we are done. It must be in the open eyes of angels, in the open eyes of demons, in the open eyes of men to satisfy God's requirements for the atonement of sin. And therefore, that was why it was crucified openly. God made sure it was done like that. Because if you have been in the secret, it could have been doubted. Nobody would have believed it took place. Therefore, it must happen in the public to satisfy God's requirement for the atonement of sin. Number two reason, on that, on that same, that same number one, to satisfy God's requirement, for the salvation of men, and that's that same requirement. It is also noticed that 
to distinguish the new covenant from the old. The old covenant was for Abraham and for his seed, and God become, became the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God was a family God as at that time to Abraham. If from a family God, a personal God, to a family God, then to a national God. God was only the God of Jews, of Israel. He was not the God of the universe. Even though he was God of the universe by creation, but by worship, he was only the God of the Jews. That's why other nations, they saw him as the God of the Jews. The Egyptians, they had their own God. The Amalekites, they had their own God. The other nations of the world, everybody had their own God. Only the Jews to have their own God in Yahweh, the God of Israel. And that's what today is called the God of Israel. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It was solely a family God to them. That was how Abraham presented him. And that was why they, that's how the people accepted him. It was never preached to others. It was strictly for the Jews. And God wanted to correct that. God wanted to remove himself from being localized to the Israel alone to become the God of the universe. Under the old covenant, it was the God of Israel. But under the new covenant, it becomes the God of the whole world. And for that to happen, it must be done publicly. Jesus must be crucified publicly so that all can see it. And from there, by his blood and by his message, the this, this gospel went out and the whole world received it. That's why when the Jews, when the disciples, when Jesus Christ died, they want to remain in Jerusalem and make him a localized, localized God like Abraham. When Peter went to the to Gentile to go and preach for the first time to Colonials, they quarrel him. Why should you go to the Gentile? This man is for us. He's our savior. Let only preach to the Jews. And Peter said, I only did by Holy Spirit instructions. He was even afraid himself. But eventually, God, by persecutions, drove them from Jerusalem to feed the man of God to Samaria and to other parts of the world, even to me and to you. So that it will not only be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the God of Israel, it can become the God of Kendall Muffin, the God of uh, Sister, uh, maybe Sister Rachel, or can become the God of uh, Sister Deborah, can become the God of uh, Brother Mike, or God of uh, Sister Bumi, can become the God of all lovers by reason of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If it was done locally, secretly, there wouldn't have been a reference point for me and for you. There wouldn't have been a reference point for me and for you. Unlike the one that Abraham did, he did, he was trying to sacrifice his son in a secret place, only him and God. But did Jesus must be sacrificed in the open so that every world can be can have access to his blood. And that satisfied the new covenant. And that's why the Bible says there's no fault with the old. There may have been a place for the new. The old was faulty because it was a made God to be a localized God, to be a family God, to be one nation's God. But the new was perfected that God may be the God of all families, that the plan of God for him, for Abraham himself, that by him, the whole world be blessed. Maybe God, the God of all families and the God of all nations, not just the nation of Israel. And that's why the reason today, the nations of the world call him God, because Jesus Christ made this so by the reason of the New Testament. And if you can, can this did that so that the whole world can have reference point. If this Calvary not take place, this reference point that me and you are pointing to today did not take place, it wouldn't have been become the God of you and the God of me and the God of other nations of the world. That is the mind of God. This sacrifice on Calvary satisfied God's purpose for the world, for atonement, and for making him the God of the universe that it truly is. That was perfected in the blood of Jesus Christ on the sacrifice on Calvary. Because it's only through blood you can reach God. Why God made it so, we don't know. But that is the requirement. Nobody can reach God without the blood. Oh, that day God showed me a vision. I want to discuss my friend. I said, I saw in heaven, everything was red. You know, if we have read the Bible very well in Revelations, and those that have gone there before, they said everything was white, gold and white. But one day I've seen that before, truly. We are, we are, I see the place beautiful, mightily decorated and wonderful place. 
Another time I saw this hair, everything was red. Everyone was wearing red, red, red robe. Everything was just everywhere. And I was wondering, this is not the heaven I know. This is not the heaven that we do. I've been described to, and my spirit, I hear somebody was telling me, say, everything become red because they are all soaked in the blood of Jesus Christ. It is the blood that makes us white. He said the blood makes us white as snow. Without the blood, there is no remission of sin. Without the blood, we cannot be saved. It is the blood that makes that to be possible. So nobody can approach God without the blood. Not even Abraham. There was always a shedding of blood, not Moses. There was always a shedding of blood. And through this same blood of Jesus Christ that was shed, we all have access to God. The land that was killed, all those animals that was killed in, in, on the Passover day in Egypt, they all have access to, the, to Israel alone. On that day of destruction, where the person was killed. But Jesus Christ made us to be accessible to God by his blood to the old world. So this death that was publicly done satisfied God's requirements for atonement. And that's why me and you today can call him our God and our Savior. Number two, reason why God allowed Jesus Christ to be crucified publicly, ridiculed publicly, and made to face the the work of atonement in the open. It was ridiculed. Even the animal that was sacrificed in the Old Testament, they were killed with respect. They confessed on them. They made sure they are all perfected, no blemish, nothing. And uh, the man that was killing me say, I'm not killing you because I want to kill you. I'm sorry for want to kill you. I'm only killing you because a man brought you that it might be in his place so that the man will not die and you can die for him. And for the same, because the priest must do one for himself, for the other. I'm not killing you because I hate you. Please don't, 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 don't be offended. You, this animal, you are pure, you are innocent. But me, I'm, I'm a sinner. I'm a bad person. Now you have to replace me before God. And they do that with respect to the animal. But Jesus Christ was ridiculed and disgraced publicly. So it's only more worse than those in the Old Testament. All because God wanted him to atone for the whole world. And number two is to silence the devil. Just imagine it. If the cross has taken place in the secret like John the Baptist, and they only come to tell us that Jesus Christ has been crucified in the secret, nobody will believe it. Some will say, don't mind them. The Jews, they are lying to go secretly. And they say, they are executing. Okay, show us the, the body. If it is true, the executing. Where is the body? Uh, where, is, where, where is the proof that they killed him? He was never killed. They allow him to go. So how can he be the, the savior of the world? But to silence the devil that we instigate men to say that, to silence the demons that we instigate men to say that, God allow it to be done publicly so that demons can never say anything against that. So therefore, it was publicly done to silence the devil, to silence demons, to silence the power of darkness that will later come and say it never happened. Even with this that happened that was crucified on Calvary, the owners are talking to you now, our brother and other faith. They used to say it. They say, don't mind them. Jesus Christ was never, was, he didn't die because uh, when they get there, they, they broke the left other teeth, but they didn't break his own leg. The Bible says his bone was preserved. It was already, his ghost was already gone. He was already dead before they got there to break his leg. Therefore, because they have been said, his bone must not be broken. And therefore, it was, and they say, uh, so you see now, his bone was not broken, and they secretly, they was, they were only fainted. They brought him down, put him in one small grave like that, and closed him. In the night, they secretly allowed him to escape. Those are brought under our feet. That is what they say to today. And some even said that uh, they didn't die. They only put him in the grave, and in the night, his disciples, they came, and they ran away to go and marry Mary Magdalene and raise a family. There was even something about that, the vision code. code. If you watch that film, that was what they, they, they are propagating. That he never died. They only secretly carry him and uh, he ran away to go and raise a family and live a normal life and, and was old. That was even a film in that respect. Even though Joker was publicly ridiculed, yet the devil seemed to get men to say that. How much more if it was done look secretly and the body was never found? It would be difficult for God to prove to, to demons and to devil and to man that Jesus Christ died. But to allow the devil to be silent permanently, 
to allow the power of sin to be silent permanently, to allow demons to be silent permanently, to allow the hell and, and, and death to be silent permanently, to allow Jesus Christ to take the key from them, the key of hell and the key of death, and to declare victory and say, oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, grave, where is your, your ego? To put them down, that victory belongs to Jesus Christ permanently, the key of death and hell, and now he's, and now he has received a name, a book or name, that his name, all this miracle can take place, that his blood can trust and believe, and all can take place. God allow him to be crucified publicly, <clears throat> so that nobody can say it never happened. And First Corinthians two verse verse eight, the Bible says, "Demons, when they look back and they saw what has happened, they say, how we regretted it that would he have crucified? How we regretted it? Because if they you now have pushed the Jews, <coughs> Christ me to do it, it could have been executed like John the Baptist secretly, and they could have half mouth to condemn it and say it never took place. Show us the body." Show us the evidence. See, today they can say show us the evidence because it was later told that secretly they came to take the body of John the Baptist and go and bury him, the disciples. The city, the town never saw it. They can say show us the body. I remember uh, in, in Nigeria here, yeah, some time ago, in one particular government, a popular lady was arrested for tra trafficking cocaine and they said they arrested him, that God's death was death penalty for cocaine. They arrested him, they put him in jail, and that she has been killed. But later, another journalist saw the same girl somewhere abroad enjoying life. And the lady, the man said, The person they said they have killed, I saw her abroad though, enjoying life. And for another man too was killed by a letter bomb. Because the person that they said they were killed was not actually killed because the killing was done secretly. They only allowed, it, allowed the person to go and enjoy life and declare to the public that they have been killed. That could have been what they have said of Jesus Christ. That don't mind them. Show us the evidence. And the devil could have half mouth to say that for the whole of eternity. But God quiets his mouth. He silenced his mouth. That salvation can be for me and for you. He was crucified in weakness, but he rose in strength. That it may be made publicly that by him, salvation is gone, not only for the Jews, for all men. Therefore, he was given the key of both hell and death, and was made the Lord of all. Number one, to satisfy God's requirements for atonement, the animals, the Lamb of God, must be killed publicly. So therefore, remember, Jesus Christ even died before the physical cross took place, because it's revealed in, in, the, in Bible in Revelation that he came and they saw a lamb that had been crucified, that have been slain, even from the foundation of the world. He had been slain a long time before the world was even created. But the, Jew, the devil was making sure that was never in the experience of men. He was arguing with God that what you did secretly in your heaven, who will we believe it or not? God has to make it to happen because human being are physical and only physical thing can redeem him. That's how they use the animals the goats, the bullock, the bulls in the Old Testament, because only a physical being can redeem a physical being. That's why you see if, if there is a, a man in prison and second man be him, they won't send a spirit to go and be him. They will, they will send, send another physical person and mature person to go and be him, because only a physical being can redeem a physical being. So Jesus Christ, even though he was be slain from the foundation of the world, and they say here is the Lamb of God, Slay for the foundation of the world. That was God, though, to make sure the devil is silent permanently. It must be done physically. And the devil was thinking, was killing Jesus Christ, ridiculing him, disgracing him, making sure he shut up his mouth. Unknown to him, it was only fulfilling the mind of God for him that the salvation of men may be perfected. He brought him physically now, not only in the spirit, slain several be years before the foundation of the world. But now, physically speaking, it took place on Calvary. That may perfect the salvation of man. And by so doing, he silent the devil permanently. Number one, God was satisfied. What he did before the foundation of the world was not made physical. 
because man needed physical evidence to show that it was redeemed. It was done publicly to, to the world for the world to see. If the devil have known that, they would never have allowed it. So God was satisfied. Number two, demons we are silenced. And that's what they say in Jesus' name, devil do this, if we obey. Because with the death of Jesus Christ and his resurrection are silencing. The only key that the devil have that make him a devil, that give him power, was the key of death and hell. And Jesus Christ went to his kingdom, to hell, on, on that in the, in the midst of that in the midst of that three days, and took that away from him and declared victory over him. And today, in his name, name of Jesus Christ, we can all have our victory. Darkness at the silence forever and forever more. In Colossians 2, verse 15. This was where I saw all this when I was doing my private study in this book, Colossians. I told you how I did my private study. I read from book to book. When I finish a book, I pick another book, one in the old and one in the new. So I was, when I was going through Colossians, there was a verse I was reading that God opened my eyes to all these things and say, do you, have you ever considered it? Have you ever thought of it? Why I allowed Jesus Christ to be publicly executed and God began to open my eyes to all this thing. In Colossians 2 verse 18, Colossians 2 verse 18 say, have you spoiled principalities and power a may ensure them openly triumphing over them in it. They too, they, were, they thought they were spoiling him. They thought they were destroying him. They thought they were using their power to subdue his power by ridiculing on Calvary. Unknown to them, Jesus Christ, God, deliberately brought them to the open, principality and power, and spoiled them there, and destroyed their work there, and openly triumphed over them. It wasn't done in secret. It was an open triumph of light over darkness. The death, light, darkness was taking their overpowering the light. Darkness, I say, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. They want to quench the life and destroy the life. On not to him, by destroying that life, life become the benefit of man. And by so doing, it destroyed them, it triumphed over them, it spoiled them, and openly it did that. And that's why today, if you have any dream, and say in Jesus' name, Konribe, it told me like that. Is it so? If you are sick, you say in Jesus' name, this is what I want. It is so. Whatever you ask, you say, whatever you ask in my name, you have it. Because I've received the key of death and of hell. And devil was permanently, not only devil, all demons in hell, they are permanently standing. No wonder Peter said the Roman go about like a roaring lion. They've lost their power. They can only roar. They can't do anything again. They are permanently silenced by the reason of the death on Calvary. That's number two. Number three, why God allowed that to happen? As we close, number three, the man must be justified and God will be glorified. Number one, I told you, God allowed it so that he can fulfill his requirement for atonement. The Lamb of God must be done, must be crucified in the open. In the eyes of God and angels and devil and demon and human being, all must be there to witness it. And on Calvary, everyone witnessed it. God was there. At the point, the Bible said, Jesus Christ, he turned his back. Jesus Christ said, Why are you turning your back, Father? Don't turn your back because the sin of the world was on him. Demons were there. Devil was there to disturb him, punish him. And they were spearing his body because they had been instigated by their father, the devil. Men, we are there witnessing it. Angels, we are there. All we are there. It must be happen for all to see. Because that is the requirement of God. And Jesus Christ satisfied that. No wonder it's given a name above all name. Number two, because it satisfied God, demon are silence. And that's why it is good to please God. The Bible says without faith, we can't please him. Because once you please God, you have silenced the devil. Once satisfy God's requirements, you are saying that we say by flesh can no man please God except in Jesus Christ. So once you please God, we have automatically silenced the devil. We say when a man's way please the Lord, he will make his enemy to be at peace with him. Once you please God, you have automatically silenced the devil. And that was God did, Jesus Christ did on Calvary. That me and you can be justified. 
and God be glorified. He said, give me a name of all name, and he went to the cross, and then they said that God the Father may be glorified. To the glory of God the Father. So Jesus Christ went through that to justify me and you. It wouldn't have been possible. Our faith were being in doubt because the object of our faith were being in doubt. And it can be said, if it is, was Jesus Christ that saved you from your sin and he paid for your sin, I are you even sure he died? Because there was no evidence. We never saw it. There was no physical evidence, but the whole world saw it. It was brutalized. They saw how they messed his body. At the point, he was so tired, they couldn't carry the cross. Somebody had to help him. He was badly beaten, badly dealt with. And on Calvary, they crucified him like a criminal. And I would say, he gave all the goods. He said, I had the power to give my body and to take it if I saw me. He gave all the goods. And the third day, he rose from the grave that our faith may not be in doubt. So me and you today are justified. We know when we confess our sin, we have been forgiven because that's a, ref a physical reference to it. Because say, God, forgive me my sin, wash me, brother, Jesus Christ, because that was a physical reference for it. As me was done secretly, though beaten, though killed, though shed the blood, there will not be physical reference. And your faith will be in doubt. I will be sure it will shed the blood if it was done secretly. That would be, I've been the demons telling you if you are praying. I am even sure you shed the blood, but there was physical evidence because in the court of man, spiritual evidence is useless. Only physical evidence is attainable. And Jesus Christ was not only destroyed or killed in the court of heaven, he was not only sacrificed. God said that he, was, he had been sacrificed even in the court of heaven before the world was created. So it was only, not only crucified in the court of heaven to please God. It was crucified also in the court of men, both in the palace of the high priest, representing the legion as a prophet, in the palace of the of uh, Pilate, representing the political aspect of it, and the palace of Herod, representing the royal part of it. All the three combined, perfected that the court of man may have physical evidence. Only physical evidence is attainable in the court of man, and especially in, in the uncovery that the cut of conscience, the cut of conscience, my conscience, your conscience, my have physical evidence that indeed this man died for my sin. And that happened because Jesus Christ was crucified on Calvary. That's why today me and you, we can pray and we can have our faith in Jesus Christ. All our faith will have been useless. There will not be anything called faith. We will not even have faith. All will have been useless. Assuming Jesus Christ was not physically and evidently crucified. But Paul say Jesus Christ was not only physically, was evidently crucified among you. Evidence in the sense that he, there was a reference point that this actually took place. Look at this in Galatians, Galatians 3 verse 1. Galatians 3 verse 1 it says, Oh, fully Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently, there was an evidence, was evidently set forth and crucified among you. He was asking them, Why are you so backsliding so easily? Why are you going back from the faith? Even though there was an evidence that Jesus Christ was killed, there was an evidence that he was crucified. So, without that, our faith could have been in doubt, our faith could have been in vain, even though there are evidence and physical proof. But in all scriptures and in other references of man in written history, that Jesus Christ was physically crucified and uh, evidently set forth and died for me and you. Even with that, demons are still trying to sow doubt in the heart of men. How much less if there are no physical evidence to that effect? So it was crucified to justify and satisfy the God's, the, 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 uh, the, the, purpose of God and the plan of God, then but to, to silence the devil. And that's why in his name, demons are permanently silenced and to justify me and you. Acts chapter 4, 3, Acts 4, 3 it says, and with great power gave the apostle witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and great grace was upon them. Oh, why was that possible? Because it was physically and evidently set forth and crucified. There was a physical evidence to the fact that he was crucified. 
Without evidence, there's no justification in the court of men. Physical evidence now. And that's why in courts, the nobody is set free. Nobody is allowed to go in court unless there are physical evidence to prove his or her innocent. And that is exactly what Jesus Christ did. He had, there was a physical evidence to the fact that me and you are justified and are safe for sin. So three reasons, go allow it. Satisfy a soul atonement need because without the blood, God cannot forgive. Without the blood, you can't reach him. And that's why to come to Jesus, to go to God. Jesus said, Jesus said nobody can come to the Father except by me. Not when, when, not when he was living. It was when he died on that cross, physically and evidently, that we can all go to the Father by him because he has put the blood. Because without the blood, there's no atonement for sin. And we are sinful. We can approach the Father only by the blood. So we it justify God. Number two is silence the devil. And in satisfying God, atonement process, in making the God of the universe. Not just the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but now is the God of all nations and all families of the world. And by so doing, is silent the devil and justify men. And at the long run, in Philippians 2, verse 11, as I close, Philippians 2, 11, you say, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. The Father. In all this thing, Jesus Christ was only glorifying the Father. That the will of the Father may be fulfilled. Demons thought they were working against him, against that purpose. But in 1 Corinthians 2 8 and Revelation 17, 12 to 13, and verse 17, 1 Corinthians 2 8, Revelation 17, 2 to 13, and verse 17, it was evidently written that the regretted ever allowed it. They thought they were winning. On to them, they were actually fulfilling the mind of God for humanity. And today, me and you, we are safe. Without that cross, <clears throat> that physical evidence that Joker was crucified, me and you will remain as sin forever. Because the devil have cast doubt, <coughs> excuse me, on that fact. And in court, whenever an evidence is in doubt, it is not attainable. Even the physical in the court of men, because it must satisfy the requirement of the court of men, as it satisfy the requirement of the court of, of God, and also satisfy the requirement even of the court of, of hell. So, therefore, in the court of men, physically speaking, because only a physical being can redeem a physical being. In the court of men, there are physical evidence. And once the evidence, the physical evidence is in doubt, it's not attainable. If we have to turn has any law, any lawyer. Or anybody has that known the law around you, that once an evidence in doubt is attainable, it's never attainable. No court we are set an evidence that is in doubt. And to allow the evidence of Jesus Christ, a salvation process for man, not to be in doubt, was evidently set forth, physically set forth, open for all to see. And there he was crucified for your sin and for your healing. Not only for your sin alone, even for your healing. And I think that believes and they confess it. The Bible says they shall be saved. Can you lift up your hand, worship him for this and magnify him? Thank you for what he did for us. That as a physical evidence that you are safe. Without that physical evidence, your salvation will be in doubt. Oh, without that physical evidence. We would not have been able to pray today in Jesus' name. It happened that we might be justified. Thank God that brother, thank you, because today I'm justified. The blood of Jesus can justify because that's physical evidence that he was crucified. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And not only was it safe to, to, to save me from sin, it saved me from sickness and disease as well. In his name, I can address sickness. In his name, I can address diseases. In his name, I can dispel all fear, fear in dreams, fear in worries, fear in concern. In his name, all are subject to his name because it was evidently set forth. Thank you, Father. 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 Thank you because you didn't compromise that. You allow him to go to the open and to be crucified openly, ridicule openly, all because you are saving me. Thank you, Father. Today, I can call you Father. I can call you God today. Because Jesus Christ paid for it. 
Thank you, Father. 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 Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Father, thank you for the work of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Even though it was done in disgrace, it was done in ridicule, it was naked. The man of Galilee, the one that had the power of heaven on earth and earth, yet he submit all to go through that terrible ordeal. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Even before he entered the cross, before he was crucified, the Bible said by his strife, we are healed. Why did we are beating him? They thought they were ridiculing him. They thought they were disgracing him. They thought they were mesmerizing him and making him to look like ordinary person. But not to them, every strife that they beat with those pins, dead, those pins, those bones, those um, the wire that have been laid with bones and metals that is cutting his flesh. Little did they know that by every blood that dropped on that flesh, healing was taking place. The Bible says, by his strife, we are healed. It even believe we are even healed before he entered the cross. Father, thank you for this. Thank you, Daddy. They thought they were disgracing him, mm. but you are healing me. Oh, thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Lord. They thought we were ridiculing him, but you are healing us. Thank you, thank you Father. Thank you, they thought they were mesmerizing him and disgracing him, but you are healing us. They spit on him, they slap him, they put a cross on his head. I mean, they put <coughs> a crown of thorn on his head. <coughs> and with every blood dripping from that head, I was being healed. You are being healed. Our healing will be perfected. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for making the demons and devils and human beings and under time to be blind to this. If they have been known, if they know and their eyes are open to it, they would never have done it. Oh, they would not have done it. If the devil know or knew that by his beating and by his strife, I'll be healed, he will never have done it because himself is the author of sickness. He will never have done it. But you blindfolded them. You may not have their way. And by the time you have finished with them, they say, had we know, you will never have crucified Lord glory. Thank you, Father, for blindfolding them. And thank you for all we, all we are passing through in our tribulations, in our worries, in our concern. Sometimes we are sick. We know you blindfold the enemy to have to say they're having their way, but at the end of the day, you'll be glorified in our life. Amen. Just as you did in Jesus Christ's case. Thank you, thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you, and thank you because we have an evidence Amen. that was crucified on Calvary. It was evidently set forth that me and all this hearing, hearing me can be set free from sin and from sickness. On the third day, he rose up triumphant and he said, Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, hell, where is your power? Now with me is the key of hell death and hell thank you for all this thank you, Daddy. no wonder now his name we can command we can declare we can confess we have hope we have victory we have faith thank you holy spirit thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing him to go through that mm -hmm. that our faith will not be in doubt no demon can say it was not crucified they saw it mm -hmm. no human can say it was not crucified they saw it, even though they want to ridicule him, they say he was crucified actually, but uh, they see a line to escape. They all testified to the fact that he was crucified. Mm. Thank you for that. Thank you, Lord. And that was the only physical evidence we have in the court of men that justify our faith, in the court of heaven that satisfy our God, and the court of demons that silence them forever because they cannot say anything against the physical evidence. It was open for all to see. And demons and death and hell and their devil with them permanently silence in all our life. Mm. And that is it in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for all this. Thank you for all this. Lord, with the benefit of the death, the beating, the stripes, and the death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the benefit, the joy, the advantage, the grace of it may be satisfied in all our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Where there are sickness, I command you. Because it was evidently set forth. <coughs> where there are diseases, I speak to you. Because Jesus Christ was evidently set forth. Where there are pain, I speak to you. Because Jesus Christ was evidently set forth. Was beating was by his strife. 
He said, we are healed. Therefore, no sickness or disease has a right to stay in anyone's air, anyone's body, here in me now. And because Jesus Christ was crucified hell in uncovering and rose on the third day, he said, the key of death and hell are mine. And in him is the victory, power of heaven and on earth. Everything submit to his feet. Therefore, in his name, every concern, every worry, every bad dreams, everything disturbing you, even sin included, they are addressed now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Because their father, the devil, was silenced. So are they also silent permanently in Jesus' mighty name? Amen. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Because our faith is not in doubt. It was evidently set forth and crucified. Therefore, my faith and the faith of everyone hearing me now are never in doubt because Jesus Christ fulfilled all. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Daddy. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Please, very, very well. Can you give a clap of praise to this God for the wonderful thing He did for us? Magnify and exalt Him. Glorify Him and exalt Him. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Blessed be your name, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are worship. Amen. Anytime you, you, anytime you remember Jesus Christ and his work on Calvary, just rejoice. Because it's where your victory is. It was physically and evidently set forth and crucified that me and you may have the victory and have it permanently. And so it is in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Export anytime you address demons and devils. Don't be afraid. They can't deny the fact that it was crucified. And our life and our victory will be permanent forever in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you for coming. I appreciate that. God will honor you. And the work of Calvary that we are rejoicing in today shall not fail in our life in Jesus' name. Amen. And evidently, physically even speaking, there will be evidence that you are with God. And you are serving Him. In your head, in your children's life, in your family life, Everything about you, there be evidence that Jesus Christ died for sin in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for coming. God bless our family song. I'm so glad I'm a part of this family, family of God. Strong as David, wise as Solomon, join together with. Jesus, amen. Heaven, hope, abandon. I'm so glad with this family. Family of God. Please, if you have your time, listen to this thing all over again and rejoice in the victory on Calvary. Rejoice in it. Rejoice over the devil. Let the devil know that now your eyes are open and rejoice in it. They have been disgraced and are silent permanently. He's just rearing. A lion that is only rearing that cannot bite, that is the devil. He can't do anything again because they have been permanently silent. Because there was an evidence that Jesus Christ was crucified. And the third day, he rose again. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. May God bless you and keep you. Amen. May God shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. May God lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. May the work of salvation, the death of Jesus Christ and his resurrections, his death, his resurrection, and all that comes with it be evidently set forth in your life and in your family and Amen. all that is yours in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. May his love abide in you. Amen. May your heart rejoice in his victory. Amen. May your body rejoice in his victory. Amen. May everything but you evidently show forth that God has indeed accepted sacrifice on you Amen. and you are rejoicing in it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Most import importantly, aside your faith in Him, I set salvation of over sin. May your head show forth that indeed Jesus Christ was crucified on Calvary Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. We are prayed. Amen. It is over. God bless you. And because a year of uh, amen, what do we say? Amen is my power. Amen is my song. With amen, I get victory in prayer. Amen is my soul. 
whenever I say Amen. Oh, in the name above all names, demons tremble and God is glorified. Amen. He is my stay. Demons tremble and God is glorified because there was a physical evidence that Jesus Christ died on Calvary. That is why Amen worked. If it was never on Calvary and that physical evidence is not there, Amen wouldn't have worked. Amen worked for us, for me and you, especially for the non Jews, because it was evidently set forth. And Amen will keep working for you and for your family in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. All because Jesus Christ was physically evidently set forth. And that will be true for your family in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Pretty powerful, amen. 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 God bless you. The meeting is over in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Go and enjoy the blessing benefit and the joy of salvation in Jesus Christ. Amen.